The dawn of July 16, 1945, had not yet fully spread. In the New Mexico desert of America, a few scientists were silently waiting for a historic moment. At 5.30 in the morning, the ground suddenly shook. The sky turned red, and a huge smoke balloon with a fireball burning in its center rose to form a mushroom-shaped cloud. It seemed as if the sun itself had come down to Earth. When scientist Robert Oppenheimer saw this scene, he said one thing, this time I have taken the form of death, which is the destroyer of this world. However, this incident was just the result of a test. This time, this weapon was going to be used in reality. Exactly 20 days later, on August 6th and 9th, 1945, this deadly weapon brought a terrible message of death to Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. In an instant, more than 150,000 people were vaporized, and over the next two months, millions more died from radiation. Many of those who survived were permanently affected by cancer, disability, and the pain of burned bodies. Hearing the news of this disaster, whose formula is religion equals MC squared, scientist Albert Einstein literally cried for the whole day. Because at that moment, people understood that when humanity is lost from science, it turns into a cruel monster. Nowadays, we all know how terrible the atomic bomb is. But many of us do not know what exactly happens inside this atomic bomb when it explodes. How this destructive power is actually created. Literally, in today's video, we will tell you how this death machine works and how some uranium changed our entire human history. The video is going to be very interesting. So, please watch it completely. And new friends, be sure to press the subscribe button next to it and select all options on the bell icon. The bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima, Japan on August 6, 1945, was an atomic bomb called Little Boy. And three days later, a bomb called Fat Man was dropped on Nagasaki. And between these two bombs, the most destructive discovery of modern science was hidden. Little Boy used uranium-235 and Fat Man used plutonium-239. Both of these elements work through a special scientific process. This is called nuclear fission or atomic division. In the process of fission, when a neutron is thrown into a uranium or plutonium atom, the atom breaks apart and a huge amount of energy and several more neutrons come out of it. These new neutrons then rush towards other atoms. They also break apart and create more neutrons. In this way, the explosion of energy continues to increase with each breakup. The reaction is called an uncontrolled chain reaction that cannot be stopped until all the uranium is used up. If you want to understand this science more simply, imagine a gas cylinder that is tightly closed and the pressure inside it is constantly increasing. You never know when that pressure will exceed the tolerance limit and cause an explosion. Similarly, uranium-235 or plutonium-239 is one such element that, although it looks harmless, contains immense energy inside. When just a few neutrons are introduced into it, it instantly becomes unstable and a destructive chain reaction begins which results in a catastrophe. When a single uranium atom undergoes fission, it produces a lot of heat and three neutrons. Those three neutrons break three more atoms and nine more neutrons are created from them. When this reaction starts with millions of atoms at once, the Earth naturally shakes. It is as if the energy, like the sun, was kept in a small house and was suddenly released. The little boy bomb used on Hiroshima in 1945 weighed 64 kilograms but its power was equivalent to 15,000 tons of TNT explosives. However, today, with just one kilogram of uranium, a bomb can be made whose power is equivalent to several thousand tons of TNT, that is, about 80 times more destructive than before. And this terrible reality has made nuclear weapons the biggest threat in the world today. But how exactly was this power used? What was the structure inside the little boy bomb, and how was the big explosion caused? Let's now see the inside of that metal sphere that changed the course of human history. The little boy bomb contained two uranium blocks. One was a subcritical mass, and the other was a supercritical mass. These two blocks were kept separate and tightly, so that they would not explode by mistake in middle. The moment this bomb was dropped from the plane, the fins at the back began to control its trajectory. The battery inside became active. The circuit was turned on. After reaching a certain height of about 1,900 feet, the trigger is activated. A small spark from that trigger ignites the core powder. Its heat causes a transition carbide disc to collide with the uranium-235 enriched part at a speed of 1,080 km per hour. That impact creates a critical mass, which starts absorbing neutrons. And then the fission reaction starts, and within a moment, 
thousands of atoms break apart one by one. It seems like everything happened in an instant. This explosion released so much energy that it created a 12,000-foot-long fireball that later rose to a height of 60,000 feet. The temperature was about 65,000 degrees Celsius. What is the temperature of the surface of the sun? Those who were in this intense heat turned into vapor in an instant, and not even their bones remained. The explosion not only caused heat but also a shockwave that spread at the speed of fire. Everything within a 4-kilometer area was destroyed. People, buildings, and trees all turned to ashes in an instant. But this destruction did not stop there. Then, an invisible poison began to play. The poison is called radioactivity. This radioactivity spread in the air for hundreds of kilometers, the effects of which remained for weeks, months, and even today are still visible. Years after the explosion, many children were born with physical disabilities. Some had deformed faces, some had no limbs, and some had underdeveloped brains. These children are known as Hibakusha babies. Radiation caused changes in the genes inside the body that took on a more terrible form in future generations. Cancer, especially leukemia, thyroid cancer, and breast cancer, began to appear widely. Along with this, mental illness, depression, and selflessness appeared. Many of these children were neglected in society and bullied at school. Many women even had abortions due to radiation. Some lost their ability to bear children. And the children who were born were also born with various diseases. This radiation was a silent poison that destroyed not only people, but entire generations. Even today, some families in Japan are carrying the legacy of that pain, taking responsibility for a crime they never committed. This bomb was not just an explosion. It was a slap in the face of humanity. Seeing this devastation, the fire of remorse burned in the heart of Robert Oppenheimer, the creator of this bomb. For the rest of his life, he kept telling the world that this bomb must be stopped. It must be stopped now. But the voice of science that warned humanity was forever drowned out by dirty politics. Today, there are more than 12,500 nuclear weapons in the world, and each of them is a thousand times more destructive than the bomb of 1945. About nine countries in the world are holding this terrible monster in their arms. Just like holding open a petrol can in one hand and a firecracker in the other. You never know when these two hands will come together and destruction will descend on the earth. Today, 80 years have passed since the Black Day of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. After that, no one has ever used this monster again. It has only been a threat. But the question is, will we really be able to control ourselves? Will no one else dare to use this deadly weapon? Or will we survive by the grace of fate? Try to make peaceful comments on each other's comments in the comment box of social media instead of making rebellious comments. Because at the end of the day, we are ordinary people. If any country uses this weapon, we ordinary people will die first. Now the decision is yours. Should there be nuclear weapons in this world? A question to think about not once, but repeatedly. What do you think? You can write to us in the comment box. If you like the video, you can like it. You can subscribe to the channel. Then see you in the next new episode. Thanks for watching.